here I'm going to go through the basic ways we have of constructing the first uh, sub D form that you can then go on and start editing and further and getting to the exact shape you need. We have five different ways of constructing that first sub D form and the most basic one is cube sub D. So let's just look at this in a little bit more detail. First down here on the dyno bar we have uh, the X, Y and Z um, dimensions of the bounding box. We also have symmetry and sharp or not. So let's just hit new and we'll see what happens. Well, here comes the, the cube sub D and if we go to select you can see there's the cube and each dimension of this bounding box is the 100 and there's the resultant sub D underneath. Now let's uh, come out and undo that. And let's take another look at some of these other options on the dyno bar. So first we have symmetry. Let's switch on some Z symmetry and hit new. And you see this little plane appears in the middle of the model and that's showing you where the symmetry plane is and I'll show you what that does in a second. And also we have sharpness. So while I have the, the box up, sorry, while I have the, the, the sub D up as I've made it, I can sharpen this up and you can uh, get a jump on your editing this way. Now if I edit this, we have the mirror plane on and if I grab one of these edges and start modifying that you see that it's been modified symmetrically around that mirror plane. So that's the most basic way we have of constructing your first sub D piece with cube sub D. The next one we have is wire cut the sub D and to show this I'll just construct a quick plane sketch on that plane. So let's just construct a quick box and uh, a circle, trim it all together, come out, go back to wire cut sub D. I'm going to grab that that sketch profile and just as you have in wire cut clay I can do the plane distance, I can flip it, I can hit apply. Um, unfortunately the crease is kind of not working uh, very interactively at this point and we'll look at fixing that. But there you can see the result and you see the result isn't too close to um, the, the first sketch that I made and that's just part of the whole sub D process. And Once you get more uh, experience as a sub D modeler you'll start to uh, know exactly how to build this first um, sketch that when you extrude it you're a bit closer to what you actually want to be like. A different example of using the wire cut sub D to start your shape is this example where we have uh, some line art here for this F14A Tomcat and we've sketched the, uh, the, the line art around that and then when we use wire cut sub D we actually end up with this first shape and then we can start pulling this around and very quickly you end up with something that looks more like like this sort of shape. Like I say, as you become more experienced as a sub-D modeler, um, you'll, you'll start to get a better idea of sketching a first sketch and what the final sub-D is going to look like. So that was wire cut sub-D. Now let's take a look at spin sub-D. I'll make a, another quick shape. And now when we go to spin sub-D, I'm going to grab this sketch and just as when you're spinning clay you can spin the sub D by selecting the sketch and then the axis, the, the line which defines the axis you want to spin around. And then down here on the dyno bar we have segments, symmetric, but by default it's set to six segments and symmetric is off. Well if I take that to eight segments for example and put symmetry on and now hit apply, I'll hide the sketch plane away and there you see the basic shape with the eight segments. Now symmetry is on and this is radial symmetry so if I start editing this shape I can then for example grab one of these points move that around and you see the radial symmetry behaving. Let's undo that. Now with the radial symmetry applied we can start to do some more complex changes so for example I will add in, uh, I'll extrude a new face and we'll add some corners for this face and you see it coming all together because of the radial symmetry and then I could for example grab that top face crease that right up I could come in cut 
a section. Grab that face again. Extrude something else up. And then just crease that up. And you can see very quickly we can start to create these sorts of radially, uh, radially symmetric sorts of shapes. Now don't worry, um, all the editing I just used, that's going to be covered in another video. I just wanted you to um, understand and appreciate the radial symmetry that's, that's there when we do the, um, the spin sub D. So now let's go on and look at curve network to sub D. This is very similar to the other curve network uh, command we have, which will make a, a solid, but this is going to end up with a sub D shape. Now here you can see we have a whole load of curves in 3D all joined together. And curve network to sub D, I will just select one of these curves. Freeform goes through, selects everything, and you can hit apply. And with all that network together, it will then end up with a sub D shape. And you can then you can use this as a basic shape that you can then start going on and adding more detail. And then the last one we have here to look at is ring sub D. And the ring sub D, uh, just like it says, is good for creating um, rings. So if I hit new, you can see the basic parameters give me this simple ring. And then I can, for example, crease this up. And you see we have uh, creased edges. And then we have twists here as well, or turns. So I can add turns to this. So I have two turns. We can change the inner diameter. So let's type in uh, 25 here, just to make it bigger. The thickness is constant. Let's take the thickness and make it a little bit less. Let's make it three. We can change the top width. And then if we look from the side, you see how the top width is getting wider. And if I take the bottom width down and uh, pump up the top width a little bit more, that will give you a better idea of how that's behaving. And then the last thing we can do here is actually change the fundamental shape. So instead of having a, a completely round ring, I could go to a flat top ring. And if I take off the turns and then take out the crease, you get a better idea of the basic form there. Or I could go to uh, an open bottom ring, or a flat top and open bottom ring. And again, let's crease it up and add a turn. So very quickly, we can create these very complex shapes, which is a very simple command. And that really uh, summarizes the five basic ways we have of starting the sub-D shape. So there's cube sub-D, wire cut sub-D, spin sub-D, curved network to sub-D, and ring sub-D.